The ocean supports nearly all life on Earth. But in some countries, like Sierra Leone, climate change has shifted the way the ocean impacts people living near it. Across the entire nation, floods are responsible for 85% of disaster-related deaths each year. And although these effects can be felt throughout the country, they are most prevalent in rural coastal communities where people depend on natural resources to live and prosper. The West Africa Biodiversity and Climate Change Program found that in some coastal communities, unsustainable mangrove harvesting means Earth's natural buffer against intruding water is no longer in place. Two communities, Mumaya in the south and Kotimo in the north, know this predicament all too well. For the last few years, rising sea levels in Mumaya and Kotimo have created devastating floods that ruin homes and farmlands and force residents to relocate further from shore. Marie Davis, a teacher in Mumaya community, recalls how the recent flooding impacted her life. In the past, Ubangai Hengat, as you see no more houses there. Where rain, where breeze they come, these two houses are unattached houses then. If the roof all they can go. Just because of not being know the valley of mangrove. But true Wabik then don't can show you what in the use of the mangrove then and then don't make this embankment. We not get again what away they just can't enter and so no more can again for camp or kitchen then because we'll say kitchen band that was how they dry fish. Then we'll houses then. They not be again this rainy season. But I know they just can't like I want and go like I want. Now if the water they can't wait, they hit the embankment. If they can't with Sansan, where be say they try for it and up now. So in case the embankment boil, we go put small small money because we get buy loss in. The buy loss who they make now they will get for the get money. So they will go buy bags and provide sticks to talk to a youth man then, or man or brothers and picking them for more they replace. We not go sit down now, it don't pata pata. For Marie Davis and other residents of coastal Sierra Leone, the floods represent an inevitable future, one in which their families and friends face uncertainty and instability. But that doesn't mean they plan to sit idle. Since 2016, the people of Mumaya and Kortimo have been working to protect them against climate-induced flooding. The West Africa Biodiversity and Climate Change first completed a study that assessed the vulnerabilities to climate change these communities face. With a clear understanding of these vulnerabilities, the communities identified the construction of embankments as the best option for flood protection. Based on the maintenance and also how um, they look after the embankment, we expect uh, between three to five years. We choose the sandbag bush and oyster shell option because it's unique in a sense. Remember, we have to look at how we minimize erosion. At the same time, we have to look at how we prevent flooding. So the bush sticks and sandbags which are placed are there to prevent flooding to an extent. And the oyster shell at the back of the wall which is mixed with the backfill material will play a very important role. At the initial stage, it will help to reduce erosion. Over time, it will help to stabilize the shoreline. So even if the structure we've constructed deteriorated over time, then we have a stronger surface, a stronger shoreline in the near future, which will not be easily eroded than what we have now. First and foremost, when we went to these villages, we engaged the elders, the chiefs, because that's the tradition. You can't go, you have to collaborate with them. We spoke to them and we told them that the construction is for them, it's for their own for their own good. So they have to give their own support and see how best we can go through the process together. So they were very helpful in identifying the areas where we can collect sand, where we can collect sticks, where we can get the oyster shells. They gave their own support and um, we worked together as a team. These people have been there for years now and from their explanation that they have to be moving back, back, 
they have nowhere to go, they have to stay there because that's where their families are, that's where they do their own trading, they do their own business. So I think what we need to do is to adapt. And I think um, constructing the embankment will help in a long way to strengthen the embankment. But most importantly, we've also transferred knowledge to them. We've helped them, give them the capacity so that in the future they can do it by themselves. And it's possible they can also help their neighboring communities to also fight against the challenge which most of them are facing as well. The embankments signal newfound security for the families whose properties have been lost to water. Together with local chiefs, they have implemented community rules to ensure the structures are maintained and protected. Nearly 5,000 people between the two communities will benefit from this increased resilience to flooding. In a country where 200,000 people have been affected by major floods over the past six years, the successful construction of embankments offer a promising solution to be replicated across the coast.